Hey guys, and welcome to the Arch Linux install tutorial part 2. So today we're going to be taking a look at our Arch Linux system we've just set up. We're going to be setting up a user and then eventually setting up a graphical environment of some sort. Specifically today we're going to be setting up GNOME, but I'm also going to be doing tutorials on KDE and LXDE and a couple of others down the road in future parts just uh, as those are requested really. I've had KDE requested and I'd like to do LXDE for myself so those are the two that are immediately going to be done uh, in the near future but today we're gonna be talking about GNOME and setting up all that fun stuff. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do with your brand new out-of-the-box Arch Linux install is make sure your network connection is working because without that it's gonna be very very difficult to install new software. So first we'll go ahead and try to ping something externally. Let's just say ping-c3 www.google.com and that'll say go out and ping it three times to google.com. And There we go. The ping did return so that's pretty cool. If it did not, what you'd want to do is go ahead and check your connection. If you're running a laptop, I'm going to have to actually do a separate tutorial because there's a bunch of different things that could be wrong with that. For today, we're just going to deal with running this through a virtual box and assuming that you're bridging or running a NAT to have a network connection. But if you want to go ahead and check your settings, go ahead and type in ifconfig dash a and that will tell you what ethernet connections you've got running if you have a, a wireless connection it would also show up in there if your wireless is set up and working correctly but you'll see here we've just got our eth0 and our lo our local host that are both working now if this is not working correctly for you if you don't have the correct ethernet address and you're on a dhcp network what you'd want to do is go ahead and run dhcp cd eth0 if you're using a wired ethernet connection. It says DHCP CD is already running so we don't have a problem. If it was not though this would go out and pull down an address for you so that's all good. And of course we looked at it a little bit earlier if you run nano slash etc slash rc dot conf this will actually go out and look at your configuration file where you can look at the specific settings for your ethernet connection. See here it says eth0 is DHCP and ETH0 is in the interfaces line so that's what it's going to use, attempt to use at least, to connect to the internet. Okay, so now that we've checked to make sure our ethernet connection is up and running, we need to go ahead and check our mirrors to make sure that we're going to be able to install the newest software in as fast a manner as possible. Now to do that we want to use a program called Reflector. You don't have to do it this way, but it's a decent way that I've found from the Arch Wiki. So what we're going to have to do is install some software using pacman dash capital S. We don't need the YU or the YY this time, just dash capital S. And we're going to put reflector and curl. Curl is actually used to go out and check pages. Uh, and it's going to pull in a lot of other things like, like Perl based stuff and some PHP stuff, I think. And it's just going to take a couple of seconds and do that. Okay, now that we've got reflector installed, let's just take a look at its man page very quickly. If we go man reflector here we have a whole bunch of options of things that we can do and actually there's only a couple that I'm going to need to use so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna demonstrate how this will work and I'm gonna do it all in one and it's going to generate me a whole new mirror list so first I'm gonna make a backup of my mirror list I'm going to move to the mirror list directory cd etc pacman dat d and then if I type cp mirror list mirror list dot backup I've got a backup created now so what I'm going to do is go ahead and give my reflector command, which is going to be reflector dash C percent OWN percent, which attempts to detect where you're located, and then dash F6. And this is going to return the fastest six repositories in my own country. And then I'm going to pipe that out using the standard IO redirect that I talked about in my latest intro to the terminal video to mirror list. And what that's going to do is just rewrite the entire mirror list file. If something were to go wrong, I can go ahead and use that mirror list backup to get back to where I was. But this should give me a file in just a minute or two. All right, that probably took about 30 seconds. Not too bad at all. Depends on the speed of your network connection. But if I go ahead and type nano mirror list, it's going to show me, oh look, generated on 923, all that stuff. And here are the six servers that it picked in the specific speed order starting top to bottom so we've got a list to work from now if I go ahead and force the mirrors to update again using pacman dash s y y using a capital s that will go out and make sure all of the servers are available that it's running at a decent speed all of those fun things and now that we've done that let's do a pacman s y u to go ahead and update the system 
There we go, we've got a couple of updates, and actually one of them is going to require us to reboot. So I'm going to pause it here. After all these installs are done, I'll reboot due to this kernel update, and we will get back at business. Alright, back again. Time to reboot because the updates are done. So we'll just type reboot and hit enter, and now we wait again. Alright, we're back up and ready to log in again, so we'll give it the root username and the password that we signed before. One other thing you might want to do concerning your mirrors, and this is the last thing I'll talk about before we move on, is if you're on a 64-bit system like I am, you may want to go into your, your Pac-Man configuration file. And once you're in this file, go down to the very bottom and add a new server, multi-lib. And I will have all of this in the show notes, of course. And basically what that does is it tells your system to go out and check your mirror list for this additional new repo multi-lib, which allows you to natively run 32-bit binaries on a 64-bit system. And of course, since we made a change to the servers, I need to go ahead and update my mirror list again using the SYY and the SYU Pac-Man commands. Feel free to skip back and see those. I'll go ahead and skip past it, though. Okay, now that we've done that, the next item on our list is actually to go ahead and create a user and make them a sudoer. You may not have to do this if you don't want to. You can continue to just use root to do all of your admin stuff and just have your user be a non-admin user. I just prefer to use sudo, just my preference. So what I'm going to do is use this user add command, user add dash m dash g users, and that says put a new user out there in the users group by default, add them to the groups that we're going to define here with a capital G, audio, LP, optical, storage, video, wheel, games, power. And of course there are more than just that, but those are the most common ones, the ones that you're going to want them to be in at least. And then we're going to say dash s slash bin slash bash, and that says use the bash shell, and that's just the most commonly used one, and your username, which will be in my case jkey0. You can make it whatever you want it to be though. After that, you need to set a password, P-A-S-S-W-D, jkey0, and give it your new password. I'm going to make it password. Really complicated, right? Now, if you remember from the first tutorial, we went ahead and installed sudo then. You can go ahead and install it now if you didn't before. Pacman dash capital S sudo will get that for you. But I've already done it. Don't need to do it again. So now we need to edit sudo. There are two ways you can do this. You can use the vi sudo command, or you can do it with another editor still using that vi sudo command. In my case, I'm using nano, so I'm going to go ahead and type editor equals nano space vi sudo. And that's going to run vi sudo using the nano editor, which is a whole lot easier in my opinion. So if I scroll on down here, just moving down the file little by little, you'll see here it says root all equals all all. That is the, what allows root to be a root user, basically. Now what I'm going to do, since I put my user in the wheel group, I'm going to uncomment this line that you see. And there we go, just take that pound symbol, the hash mark off the front. It now allows the entire wheel group to do that with a password and to execute any command using sudo permissions. So we'll hit control X to save, yes to save, enter to save it, then we're done. So now if I were to log in as the jkey0 user, I could do anything as an administrator that I want to. And this is where things are going to start to get a little bit more fun. We're going to install the sound system, we're going to install the X, the graphical server, and then we're going to put a desktop environment on top of it, and we should be ready to start using Arch. So, I'm going to install Pulse Audio. I know a lot of people hate it, but it is the default in a lot of systems, and I prefer to use it just to have consistency, if nothing else. So we're going to type Pac-Man dash capital S Pulse Audio. And that's going to install Pulse for us. I mean, that's really about all there is to it for the moment. You see, that's a lot of stuff it's going to be pulling in, so we'll wait for that. Now, to deal with the problem that you might have if you are an all-C user and you're going to be trying out Pulse Audio, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. We're going to type in pacman dash capital S ALSA plugins. That way, if you have any apps that only support ALSA, this will allow Pulse to be able to work with it as well. And that generates a couple of files for you, and it does install a plugin that allows it to work. And basically, that's about it for Pulse, I believe. There will be a couple of extra configuration settings we'll have to make to Pulse once we get GNOME installed, but we'll worry about that when we get there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead to the fun part, installing X, installing drivers, and getting ready to do graphical stuff. So, since we're on a virtual box, we don't have to use the specific proprietary drivers, so I'm going to say pacman s xorg mesa libgl 
and we're going to cross our fingers and hope that that's enough. Now we're going to install a whole bunch of stuff there and we're going to just wait and so I'll pause and be right back. Alright, at this point we've got the graphics server set up. Now we just need to install our input drivers. Now we should be able to do this just using evdev. So we're going to do pacman-s xf86 input evdev and hopefully that will get us all the drivers we need to do hot plugging for all of our keyboard and mouse type things. Now one thing I should probably mention there, just in case you are running something that's not VirtualBox, if you're running an NVIDIA or an ATI card, you can actually do an LSPCI pipe grep capital VGA and it will show you what sort of VGA compatible control you're running. It'll say either ATI, NVIDIA, Intel, in my case it says Inotech VirtualBox adapter. If you're running NVIDIA, you'd want to run pacman s NVIDIA, probably, to get the correct driver. Please refer to the Arch Beginner's Guide for all the specifics. It'll tell you what sort of models will go with what drivers. The same sort of thing applies to the ATI drivers though it's probably best to look at the open source ATI drivers because the proprietary ones not so great. Well now that we've got all those things installed we've got all the drivers and everything hopefully that we need let's go ahead and just try it and see what happens. Let's just run startx and if all goes well oh look we got a ArchVM uh, the X term default thing it's not actually a full desktop environment but it's definitely a good place to start you see I can move the mouse between the different windows and at this point it does have a desktop environment. It's not 100% where we want to be yet though, so let's go ahead and move on to something else. And that means it's time to install a desktop environment. Now one thing the Archer Wiki recommends before you install a desktop environment, doesn't matter which one you install, is to install some decent looking fonts, because a lot of them just don't come with them. So what we're going to do is install some, we'll say pacman s ttf deja vu ttf-ms-fonts and that will give us a decent selection of fonts that will make your system look maybe a little bit better than the default would look. Alright that was relatively quick and painless and now we're going to install GNOME and this is actually not as bad as it might sound. We're gonna say pacman s GNOME and that's really all you have to do. However there are a lot of extra things you can do that will make things a lot smoother in the long run. GNOME-extra gnome-system-tools and that's really a good place to stop as far as what you need to, to install just to get into GNOME. You'll see there we've got a total of 350 megs of stuff we have to download so this is going to take quite a little while depending on your connection. So I'm going to start it and then I'm going to start back up later. Alright and quite a bit later we're actually we've got GNOME installed at this point so let's go ahead and just try to run it and see what happens. So if I run xinit slash user slash bin slash gnome dash session, then we cross our fingers. And that took just a couple of seconds and oh look, we've got a gnome desktop. I mean, we are in business at this point. Applications installed, all of those fun things. Alright, that was a pretty good test. However, we don't want to be logged into GNOME as root. We never want to be in any sort of graphical environment as root, so we're just going to log out of it there. And what we're going to want to do now is go ahead and become our non-root user. So I'm going to SU to jkey0, my second account. And I didn't even need a password for it because I was root. Alright, and maybe in a weird funky order here, but there are a couple of things we should probably do to make sure that our GNOME experience is a little bit more smooth. You, we mentioned we installed Pulse Audio earlier, so what we're going to want to do on top of this is run sudo, because I'm not root anymore, pacman s pulse audio gnome. That will make sure that we've got the Pulse Audio plugins that we need within GNOME to make everything work, work as integrated as possible. There we go, there are a couple of conflicts, we'll just go ahead and hit yes to remove those, and it replaces them with things that are comparable, if not better, and more geared toward Pulse. Alright, and the one other thing that I would suggest is to actually go into your RC conf file, so sudo nano etc rc.conf, and from this file we'll go to the very, very bottom, to this daemons line, and we're going to add in a couple of things. Before network we want to add in dbus because it actually needs that to start up GDM which is where about what we're about to add. And GDM is the GNOME Display Manager and that is what allows us to easily log into the system as ourself and just get everything running. So to make it just uh, seem as, as seamless as it could be this is what it's going to be like starting up something like that. Let's just go ahead and restart now. So sudo reboot 
and we'll give it a couple of seconds and it should be done back up in just a few minutes. Okay, this is what our startup process looks like. If you hadn't noticed it before, we've got this cute little Arch Linux logo in the upper left corner. We're loading up all of our dependencies and stuff. And as if by magic, there's GDM. This is what it actually should look like. And that's about where we're probably going to stop. Let me just go ahead and log in. We'll make sure sound works and stuff. Give it my password, which is password. And there we go. You see here we've now got this little icon we didn't have when we were logged in as root. If I come in and just move it, move the slider up, I should have audio now. Now, of course, at this point, it will always start up to GNOME unless you make a change to that rcconf file again. Uh, there's a couple of things I like to do out of the box. I like to put the terminal up here because I do use it a lot. And, of course, you're going to want to install new software. Anything you want to install, you can search for using Pac-Man. Pac-Man dash capital S, little s, whatever you want to find. So in my case, let's just say Firefox. Then we wait a second. There we go. It says Firefox is the name of the package I want to install. You see extra slash Firefox. That's all I really need. So sudo pacman dash capital S Firefox. We'll actually go out and get the Firefox version 3.6.10. And there we go. So now if I go back to my applications list, go to internet, I've now got Firefox that I can use. Awesome. You will notice, however, when you run it, it doesn't actually uh, say that it's Firefox. It's Namoroka, which it just removes some of the branding, and that's perfectly fine by me. And of course, one of the last things I would suggest doing, at least for this tutorial, is to go ahead and install codecs, plugins, Java, things like that. So we're going to do sudo pacman dash capital S mplayer gecko dash media player xine lib xine ui lib dvd read lib dvd css also oss and JRE. And with that one command, we're going to get a bunch of stuff. You'll notice I didn't add Flash Player to that one because I'm on a 64 bit system and I actually don't want the 64 bit Flash that's out there because it's actually 32 bit wrapped up in a 64 bit plugin wrapper and that one just doesn't work very well. If you do want to go ahead and get using Flash Player before I get to, to make the video talking about the AUR, uh, by, by all means go ahead and install it. The package name is Flash Plugin but I will tell you right now it's not great. Uh, it crashes a lot because it is a wrapped up 32-bit version. But basically after this you should have sound, you should have video, you should have basically everything but Flash to have a fully functional GNOME desktop and Pac-Man that will allow you to install whatever software you want from the Arch repos. If something is not in the repos you'll have to check the Arch user repository. We will talk about that in the next video. But that's all for right now. This is going to be a really long video and I am sorry for that. Thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you next time.